Welcome to Hear God Every Day. I'm your host, Sarah Witten. Get comfortable, open your heart, and let's talk about how we can be more sensitive to God's voice in our everyday life. Welcome back. As we continue on this journey of hearing God better every day, there was a topic really that God just kept putting on my heart, mostly because it's something that I feel like we all encounter in our listening. Um, And that's identifying the things that God won't say. So if you're listening for an answer from the Lord or you're, you know, having your, your God time trying to really wrestle through decisions, things like that, These are just a few, not an exhaustive list, but these are a few of the things that you know are not God. And I feel like the enemy uses these things and kind of, you know, inserts them into our mind or into our path because they work so well. So as we're talking about this, if you're like, oh my gosh, that's, that's me. I'm totally believing that right now. Um, you know, I just want to say no shame because these are things that even I struggle with, um, at times. And I feel like, um, these reminders of what is not God and not his heart are essential to us, no matter where we are on our journey of learning how to hear him. Because the enemy, when he comes, he comes with the, did God really say? And we can't answer that question of, did God really say, if we're not sure. (laughs) Was that God? Was it not God? Well, these are five things that are definitely not coming from the Lord. Um, So before I launch into what they are, I'm going to just pray. Um, God, thank you for each and every person who you have brought into this time, Um, because really this is a time with you. And I just pray that, God, that you can use um, these words to really just spur things in their own heart that would just breed encounters with you, that you would begin speaking to them in such a specific way, such a healing way. God, I pray that this episode specifically would be a time of healing, a time of encouragement, like literally a filling up with courage. Um, and God, that you would just tear down any false message that the enemy is trying to speak. And We just release this time to you. We ask that it um, submit and be obedient to your will and what you have planned. And we thank you for all that you're going to do. It's your name we pray. Amen. Uh, Before we dive into these five things, I just want to say quickly, just share with you guys something exciting that is going on for me personally. So I got an email yesterday um, from the publishing company that has picked up my book and um, it said that within the next few days, it should be going to printing, which means that, and maybe even by the time this episode is uploaded, there will be pre-order information available. And I want to talk to you just really quick, you know, 10 seconds, don't tune out of the podcast, um, about just what this book is, because I wouldn't waste your time. I promise you, if I didn't think there was um, value or that if I didn't think that God was going to do something in your life through this book. So um, this book has been something that God uh, started kind of working on in and through me since 2017. Like it's been a journey and a messy journey and a beautiful journey. But what this book is about, it's called Uncommon Vessels, Ongoing Journey to a Renewed Mind. Um, And the uncommon vessels part, it just captures kind of the heart of the book because um, the book covers, it's 10 chapters. It's not super long. 
Um, it covers 10 ways that living a Holy Spirit life, a Holy Spirit led life, is going to look backwards from the normal way of doing things. 10 ways that you can flip your thinking and your everyday living on its head to truly become an uncommon vessel for the Lord. And that uncommon vessel comes from 2 Timothy 2.20, where it starts and it says that, you know, the Lord um, calls some of us to be purified and to be to be changed to become vessels for uncommon uses as opposed to common use vessels. And um, I really feel like as you journey through these chapters, which each of them end with activations, they end with ways for you to take it to God. So it's really something that you could get and read in multiple different seasons and still get a different experience from. Um, But it is a tool for transformation. And so Keep an eye on the website, um, www.arrowsofzion.com. We'll have pre-order information on the website. I'll also be posting on social media. So if you follow Arrows of Zion, there will be updates there. Um, But just candidly wanted to give you guys a preview. Um, And like I said, I wouldn't waste time on it on this podcast if I didn't truly believe that it was something that it was A, written by God, because I'm telling you, even in the editing process, I'm going back through and and reading things and thinking, wow, I don't remember writing that. That's amazing. That's so profound. And it's the Holy Spirit. It is truly, truly just God's wisdom poured into these pages. So um, that either should be out soon or is out. Um, Check those places. And I'm super excited about it. So I wanted to share with you guys first. Okay, now our five things, five things that God won't say, all right? Number one is something that I feel like as a doer, as a fixer, as a solver, I get caught up in a lot. But number one is it's all up to you. Now, don't hear that as God's never going to ask you to do anything because that is definitely the opposite of the direction I want to go. Um, But God is a God of meeting in the middle. So he calls us to things and he, you know, lines these things up for us. And they do take a, a a cooperation, a um, making choices in line with these callings. Um, It does take a response on our part, but the enemy loves to twist that into something very different. And actually this marquee in our small town right now, um, it just like really spoke to this. I, I read that marquee and immediately like went home and like, you know, typed it out on my phone so I wouldn't forget because it was just so, I just, I read it and was like, that's something that God would never say. And that marquee said, if it is, If it is to be, it is up to me. If it is to be, it is up to me. And I've seen so many broken hearts over healings, over um, callings, over, uh, you know, being delivered from worrying or, or, um, you know, things like that, feeling like, oh, I I just must have not said a prayer right. I must have just, you know, um, because this thing is happening to me, I must have just done something just slightly off and and, and just now it's, it's just totally ruined. And, you know, like I said, while God does call us to um, hold the line with our actions and he holds us accountable for those. And also he does call us to partner with him in the things that he's doing in our lives. Um, he also knows that we're human and he knows that we're limited and to leave something as weighty as, you know, the success or failure of our lives and our, our soul completely up to us 
it's just not God's heart. I mean, the whole Bible is about how Jesus was sent, that Jesus came so that we could experience the salvation that we could never earn. So if you are in a place where you're hearing, oh, this this thing is going to happen, or you know, you are going to get this blessing if you earn it by fill in the blank, whatever it is, having enough faith, praying the right way, doing you know X Y Z. God is not going to say that it is all up to us. He's going to ask us to partner with him. But also there is just, in everything he does, that element of grace and mercy because we're human and we need it and we can't do it on our own. Okay, number two is I'm done with you. I'm done with you. And, you know, when I heard this kind of in my spirit, I thought of two different things. So God's never going to say, I'm done with you in the angry, I'm fed up, I, I'm i just not dealing with this anymore, I don't like you anymore, I'm done with you. I mean, you think about in that context, even the Israelites, when they were sent into exile, God went with them. God went with them. We were just talking about this at, you know, um, a women's group that I was at recently. And, you know, back then they built temples for their other gods and, you know, their idols and things. And their belief was that their God or idol lived in the temple, didn't leave the temple. So, you know, what she did outside the temple was really, you know, none of their business. Um, but never would an idol or another, a false God leave the temple to be with the people. And when the Israelites went into exile in Ezekiel, literally like God traveled with them. And so God's never going to say, okay, it's been too many chances. I've had enough. I'm done with you. But he's also not going to say, I'm done with you in the sense of, well, we've achieved all of the callings and the purposes that I had for you in this life. And so you can just coast and I'm done with you. And, you know, I don't know your story, but you may be at a point in your life where you feel like God is not using you the way he used to. And you may wonder like, hey, has my days of greatest calling or my days of greatest adventure past is God has God used me for what he wanted to use me for and now I'm just kind of you know in spiritual retirement if you will or coasting and that's not from God either because I firmly believe that while we are still on this earth that God takes us from glory to glory it's not just that he has other things other callings little things to fill our time but that God, in his equipping and training of us, as we go through more and more of life and gain more wisdom, that his callings for us also continue and they they elevate. And, you know, whatever season you're in, God's not done with you. He's still wanting to use you. And a lot of times the enemy will come against us with either a real shortcoming, you know, something that physically we just were not able to do or, you know, we're not capable of anymore, or even a spiritual or emotional, you know, handicap that we perceive that disqualifies ourselves. And, you know, the enemy will say, well, you know, God could use you back then, but now, you know, your knees aren't great. Your health's, you know, kind of iffy. So God can't really use you. He can't really do a lot with you. And that's a lie. That's a lie. Because God understands completely your situation. And yet he still has callings 
that he knows that you can partner with him in, and he knows that they would delight you and be for the glory of the kingdom because you were they were built into your being. You know, this is what you were created for. So you're going to love it, but also it's for the kingdom. Best of both worlds. Okay. Number three. Something God will never say is, I know my word says, but. Okay. So much of God's law, you know, like the Ten Commandments and kind of parameters for living and things, we think of as a little bit antiquated, right? You know, do I really have to take a Sabbath? You know, obviously I'm not carving idols. Do idols apply to me? That kind of thing. Um, You know, I know God's word says this, but, and I just want to say that, you know, God does not contradict himself. And, you know, the enemy would love for you to think that you are the exception to the rule. You know, trust me, I've been there. And while God always sees your heart and he sees um, your good intentions as well, we also are held to his word. We're held to his word. And, um, you know, God brought to mind the instance of David and the consecrated bread and how, you know, David and his men were hungry. And it was against the um, kind of regulations of the time to eat the consecrated bread. Um, And, you know, God gave him special permission to do so. And as I was thinking about that exception, you know, how David kind of got a pass, what God spoke to me is that that was a human tradition. That was a um, kind of flying in the face of the religious spirit of the day. But it wasn't a breaking of one of the commandments, which David did. <laughs> he did break, you know, actually a number of the commandments. And, you know, God had forgiveness for him, but there was devastating consequences, heartbreaking consequences for David. And, um, you know, if you're hearing, if you're, if you're hearing a voice that is saying, hey, the Bible says the way you're living is wrong, but God's probably fine with it. That's probably just for everybody else. That's not really for you. God will never contradict his words. I mean, even in the New Testament when Jesus said, you know, love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and um, love your neighbor as yourself. He said this sums up all the law and the prophets, not this replaces all the law and the prophets. So, You'll never hear God say that. Number four, you'll never hear God say, be afraid. I have heard some real scary prophetic words. <laughs> but something coming from God, while it may be um, maybe the, the word that we're reading causes us on a human level to fear just because we're like, oh my gosh, I don't know how is it. Like, you know, right now, um, I'm about to go into uh, the delivery of our third child. And there's always, you know, God God has been speaking over this delivery. And um, there's always just those leaps of faith, though, where I may, be, I may be afraid, but God is not telling me to be afraid. You know what I mean? So um, I want to say to you, that if you have gotten a word that makes you feel afraid, that is all all warning, all gloom, and no hope, that that's not how God operates. 
Um, I just finished reading a study that was all the context of the don't be afraids in the Bible. It's fascinating. I mean, God told people not to be afraid when he was talking about not fearing other people and, you know, their their abilities and their powers and what they could do to you. He uh, said, don't be afraid to marry. And the promise that he gave her that, you know, was an amazing promise, but ultimately, you know, could make her somewhat of a societal pariah. So don't be afraid. He said, don't be afraid to Abraham and his infertility. He said, don't be afraid. When Jesus was walking on water, Jesus said, don't be afraid. And then asked Peter to do the same. When Nehemiah was afraid to ask for the dream that was in his heart, which was to rebuild the temple, he was afraid to ask the king for that. God said, don't be afraid. So whatever context you're in, fearing bad consequences, fearing other people, fearing um, what the cost is going to be of obedience to God, fearing infertility, fearing stepping out on the waves, um, fearing the decisions and the sacrifices and the, the things that have to be done to pursue the dream that has been put on your heart. God says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You know, the Old Testament, there's a lot of prophecies that, you know, you can point to and say, look, God was trying to scare people. But the analogy that I got is God's warnings, even when he's warning us about something, They're like warnings to somebody in a burning building. It's not, ooh, be afraid of the fire. You should really fear the fire. It's, hey, that building's on fire. You should probably get out. Get out of the building. You'll save yourself, right? There's always that hope attached. There's always that, here's here's how you can partner with me, and it can turn around, right? There's always a hope in a future. And when we get those words without the peace of the hope in a future, I talked about this a little bit last week too with giving words to people. Like, you know, if you um, get a word that's just like, oh man, (laughs) here's this warning or these bad news and there's no, I'm not going to finish it with any hope and um, I don't have any directives to give you to, you know, help like partner with what God's doing, you know, that that's not God. He doesn't tell us things to scare us. In fact, he doesn't want us to be afraid. So if you're hearing something that's scaring you, stop for a minute and say, okay, is this just my human emotions being afraid? Um, but God's not really saying anything scary because that's very possible. That happens to me all the time. Like I feel afraid, like, oh God, are you, are you sure? Are you sure you're calling me to do this? Are you sure I can do this? But God's message is never be afraid. Um, But if you're getting just a word of like darkness, like you need to be afraid, that's not from the Lord. And we have the ability to receive or reject prophetic words that were given and say, yes, this fits with what God's telling me or no, this doesn't. You know, um, the opening of that book I mentioned, I talk about how, you know, Romans 12, 2, it, God renews our mind so that we can test and approve what his will is. God wants us to be able to test and approve, like quality control for heaven, to test and approve, like, yep, that sounds like God in his will, or nope, that doesn't sound like God in his will, reject that. So God will never tell you to be afraid. And then lastly, God will never tell you it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, now I'm not talking about if you're going to have tacos or burgers for dinner. Um, You know, you don't need to agonize over every decision. But I would say that, I mean, even just reading a, a piece 
of the detail of what goes into the science of the universe. Like, you know, um, all of the perfectly placed things that God had to orchestrate in such a way so that everything could happen. God's a God of the details. And a lot of times we think what we have to give is so little, it doesn't matter. Or what we care about, what we're concerned about is so little, it doesn't matter. Or our prayer request compared to our friend's prayer request who's really going through it, it's not that big. It doesn't matter. And I want to say, if it matters to you, it matters enough to bring to God. I also want to say, if it doesn't matter to you, it still matters to God. Because what God told me is our caring doesn't negate or endorse our callings. Okay, so how much we think what we're doing matters or not doesn't negate or endorse our callings. Nothing is insignificant, and with God, nothing is wasted either. I mean, Romans 8.28 tells us that he uses everything for good. And a lot of times, the enemy will try to get us to slip by saying, eh, it doesn't really matter. You know, you don't have to pray about that. That doesn't really matter to God. That's just a small thing. Or because he knows how powerful your prayers are, just saying. Or saying, well, why why give the little bit that you have? It's not going to matter. It's not going to make a difference. And it's like, look at the boy who gave his fishes and loaves. And tell me it didn't matter. God will never tell you it doesn't matter. So here's our check-in. Here's the part that you are going to write down um, and take to your God time, okay? And this will be up on the show notes page, um, CPN shows, uh, Charisma Podcast Network, uh, dot com slash shows. And then searching here, God, every day or search there, Witten, um, it'll pull it up. The check-in for this week is first question, where am I believing it's all up to me? And related to that, where do I need to surrender control? You know, after having um, a miscarriage when I was pregnant with our daughter, um, the song Reckless Love was like the song of my season because I kept worrying about what if I have another one? What if I have another one? The whole time I was pregnant with our daughter and God kept reminding me, you can't earn it. You can't deserve it. It's not that if you do the perfect things that you will avoid it. But it's also not that you could ever deserve it. You can't say enough, you know, repentance prayers or this or that. To it just, it just is. It's just a blessing. And so, what are the places you're believing it's all up to you? And where do you need to surrender that control? Okay. Next, I want you to ask God. In what ways do I think you've given up on me? Maybe you just feel so much shame that you haven't even realized that you felt like God had given up on that part of you too. Oh, well, I've messed up so many times in that area. So, you know, I'm giving up on that. I bet God has too. Or attached to that question, What ways have I given up on myself? 
and have God remind you of maybe ways that you've given up on yourself. And I want you to ask God, take a minute and remind me how you go with me. You know, just like the Israelites, even in exile, he goes with us. Ask God to remind you how in those areas that you've given up on yourself, how he goes with you still. Never left. Okay, third, I want you to ask God, what commands or callings have I pushed to the back burner as not applicable? Whew. So that's the tied to the whole, I know the word says, but. So what, what things in the way that you're called to live have you pushed to the back burner as, well, that's, that's not applicable or, you know, I don't really need to do that. And ask God to highlight if there's any ways in you. I mean, just like David, how he asked God, you know, search me. And if there's any offensive way in me, you know, give me a a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. That's what we're crying out for. The number four, where am I feeling like your voice is threatening or instilling fear? Maybe we're not even realizing like, oh, I'm a little bit afraid to hear from God about that thing. But here we're taking time to sit with the Lord and say, where am I feeling like your voice is threatening or instilling fear? Because, you know, spoiler alert, if it is, then that's not his voice. And then tied to that question, could you tell me what you're really saying in those places? Because not only do we need to pull out that weed, but we need to plant truth there. So in those places that are have that fear, Ask God, what are you really saying in those places? And then last, what are some things in my life that you really care about that I haven't realized? Those things that we think, oh, it doesn't really matter. But God's like, no, I really care about that, actually. Or things that really matter to you that you think maybe don't matter that much to God. Ask God to show you the things that he really cares about in your life that are big deals that maybe you don't realize are big deals. All right, so that's what I have for you this week. Um, I just pray for the journey that God has you on and um, that he would just speak more clearly to you each day as you seek him and as you engage with him. Um, And I will see you back here next week and we'll have a new topic. So Um, so yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to just, um, dive in more, but until next week, bye for now. Thanks for spending time with me today. If God spoke to you through this time, visit arrowsofzion.com for writings, resources, and ways to partner with me in reaching the unreached with the gospel. You can also find Arrows of Zion on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Have a blessed day and let's meet here next week.